Goldman, who has returned a kick for a score in his Duke career. Got good blocking around the corner. And it was just the diving try there by Girard that tripped up Goldman, or he would have gone the distance. Spence Fisher is the quarterback. He's a sophomore. They get to Cuthbert. Randy works hard for a couple of yards. Let's quickly set the starting offensive unit for you for Duke. Again, the quarterback will be Spence Fisher. Randy Cuthbert will be the key man. Baldwin basically a blocking back. Breedlove and an injured Stanley Dorsey, the wide receivers. A good offensive line, and Dan Clark in his final year, the fifth-year senior, has been a pleasant surprise at tight end. There's the numbers on Fisher. He played a half last week against Wake Forest, and quite frankly, he was off his game. Cuthbert, the workhorse, and he gets it across the 30, the 29-yard line. Ricky, though, who suffered a mild concussion last week, makes the tackle mild only if it happens to you. 3-4 defense for State. Logo was the defensive lineman of the week. Aiken's a solid man, and Carl Reeves, the light but effective defensive tackle. Good linebacking core headed up by David Merritt, one of the top tacklers in the conference. And as I said a week ago, collectively, the best secondary in the country, or at least the ACC, headed up by Mike Reed and Sebastian Savage. Third down and seven for Duke, just underway from the 29-yard line. Time, and he's got a man at the 21, which will be very close to a first down. It's Brad Breedlove, the senior from Homosassa, Florida. Good protection for Spence Fisher down in this part of the field. State will do a lot of blitzing. Crossing route right underneath. Good coverage by Sebastian Savage, but a good throw as well by Spence. The question is, did Reed Love stretch it long enough to get the first down before he was thrown back? We'll find out as they bring the chains from the far side of the field. Well, just what Duke wanted to do with the Goldman kickoff, get themselves involved in the game. The problem, of course, is that when you get down to this part of the country here in Raleigh, it's tough to punch it in the end zone. Just 14 touchdowns allowed in 10 games by the NC State defense. Duke's got four fresh downs to try and put number 15 into the books. That man, Dick Sheridan, last week won his 50th game, and he uh, got the monkey off his back against Virginia. He had never beaten the Wahoos. First and 10 for Duke, and Spence Fisher, the sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. Again, it's Cuthbert. He has stood up in the hole right at the 20 yard. Damon Covington, a sophomore from Berlin, New Jersey, and David Merritt. We'll call those guys' names plenty today. Good job by Damian Covington to stand up the blocker, Brandon Moore. Shed him and Baldwin, who was trying to lead on the play, limit Cuthbert to just a couple of yards on the play. in the wind column. Again, short yardage for Cuthbert. Covington again. Covington, as a starter, averaging 16 and a half tackles a game. He's been everywhere. Last week, what, 21 tackles against Virginia? Well, they began the year with Greg Giannamore lined up alongside of David Merritt. Giannamore has had a good year, but Covington a little bit quicker than Giannamore, and he has been very effective. And, of course, Merritt, the guy who plays next door, leads the ACC in tackles. Another big third down. They need five yards. Fisher, wide, will be short of the first down at the 14-yard line. Tyler Lawrence, 58, who was in the end zone last week on an interception in the fourth quarter, makes the stop right there. He's a senior from Greensboro. Robert Baldwin trying to sneak out of the backfield. I think Duke was anticipating another outside blitz with the linebackers. Instead, they ran Merritt from the inside, and the outside backers stayed at home. Good coverage by Lawrence, stopped the first down. Number three is Randy Gardner, the all-time kick scorer in Blue Devil history. This will be a 31-yarder from the near pass mark. He's 7 of 14 in field goals this year. And he has hooked it wide, so it wastes the great kickoff return by Leroy Goldman, and they come up empty as Randy Gardner 
Gardner misses on the field goal, and that'll also help NC State average just 14 points against them a game. 11 0 1 to go in the first, no score from Raleigh. No score, NC State turns away the threat. You know, in yardage given up, NC State right in the middle of the pack of the ACC, but on top of the board in points given up, the most important category. It's almost like a force field comes up at about their 30-yard line. Terry Jordan and the Wolfpack offense on the field. Jordan wants to put it up right away. And he's got Anthony Barber across the 30 to the 34-yard line. The senior tailback out of the backfield picks up 14. Good play call by Ted Key, looking for Barber to run the ball to get his 1,000 yards. Instead, he is the intended target of Terry Jordan. He put a good move on Daryl Spells as well and took a seven-yard pass and doubled the total. Slot to the top, and now Jordan checks off. Here's the option. The quarterback hammered to the ground at the 39-yard line by Sean Thomas, the free safety. Let's check the offensive starters for NC State. There's Jordan, the quarterback, having a very accurate season. We've talked about Barbara Greg Maynard's had a good year, and Reggie Lawrence and Ray Griffiths and Eddie Goins and the rest of the wide receivers have done a good job. Veteran linemen up front, Ward and G had the list, as well as co-captain Neil Hour at tight end. Second down and five. They go delay. Here's Barber. This one is stopped out well by the front wall of Duke, and it's a very good, they play an even defense, and the strength are the down four. And a very late flag thrown in the secondary. You see the upfront people, David Wafel playing for the injured Scott Yeomans. Pearson's had a good year. Verdan, one of the top tacklers in the conference. A young secondary as well for Duke. There are only three people that they will lose from the top 22 of the Duke defense. So they've had some growing pains. And sometimes you say or do things at the end of a play, the Jim play, Knight tells us after the play. Foul, personal foul, yeah. defense, first foul. Instead of third and uh, third and five or so, somebody said something or did something. That immaturity, the inexperience. Again, you see Barry Wilson right there. He said, think, use your heads, guys. And it's a critical penalty, obviously, now at the 45-yard line of Duke. He's NC State. This time it doesn't quite pick up the same amount of yardage, but it's a solid gain. Give him six or seven. Neil Auer yesterday, the fine tight end, the senior from Fairview, North Carolina, talked a little bit about the offensive unit for NC State. It's a great accomplishment for us, and uh, we feel real good that Anthony's about to do that. And, you know, Greg Maynard's had uh, a, a lot of yards rushing this year, too. So that, uh, that brings a lot of satisfaction to us to know that, that we're uh, – paving the way for him to do that. Speaking of Greg Maynard, he had a hole. The only problem is he lost the football, and Duke gets it back at the 23-yard line. So a critical play. Derek Jackson falls on the football. Well, Greg Maynard with some good running room on the quick little trap inside, and it looked like David Wa or Warren Scoville it was as here was going by him, hooked his arm, and the ball popped loose, and eventually it was Derek Jackson, the senior, who fell on the football. He ran up the back at George Hageman. That's like running into a, a four-story building. Hageman's 332. A lot of movement on both sides of the line of scrimmage, and Jim Knight will have to solve the problem for us. It'll be a march off against Duke. They tried to go to a quick snap, but it wasn't quick enough for some of the guys. Or too quick for others. Everybody was, was ready except P.J. Shunk, the uh, right guard. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure, off 9.03 to go in the first quarter. No score. We've seen a football on the floor. We've also seen a long kick return by Duke. But Duke missed a 31-yard field goal and scoreless. They go wide to Cuthbert out of the shotgun. And that's probably Randy's best run. Damon Covington knocked him out of bounds after about a four-yard advance. 
Well, Cuthbert has a chance for a thousand yard season. He came in today with, you see, the 858 yards. Duke with two games yet to play in the 92 season. And as Drew mentioned in the last drive, that when he goes over 100, Duke usually does very well. 8 3, the 11 100 yard game for Randy Cuthbert. Here's Cuthbert. You won't see that very frequently. He does not drop the ball very much. 28 receptions this year. He had 50 a few years ago, 46 in 1990. He has great hands. I'm trying to see here in the replay if he was taking a peek. Yep, he was. You could see him turn his head, looking for Covington just before the football got there. And coaches will always tell you, catch the ball first, then find out where you are. Well, Jack, you're an old wide receiver, and it isn't the adage to apply there. Catch it, because you're going to get hit anyhow. That's right. Third down and a bunch. They need 11. They're looking at the 34-yard line. Fisher. Downfield. It's going to be intercepted. Ricky Turner, the free safety, hauls it in. And back and forth we go. There might not be any points on the board yet, but it's already been a typical Duke State football game. Wild and wacky. We have pause for a word from your local stations. Spence Fisher is picked off for the ninth time this year, committing the cardinal sin. 1-3, 1-4, late down the middle. See all those red shirts in a row there? That's what happens when you throw the ball late down the middle. It just gets too crowded with traffic. And you get a deflection, and Ricky Turner comes up with his seventh career interception as a member of the Wolfpack. And NC State, for the second time this afternoon, will have it in Blue Devil territory. This drive will start at the Duke 40-yard line. Brad Sherrod walking up for Duke on the outside. He's coming on a blitz. Great catch. Does he hang on at the 30-yard line? No, he juggled it. Robert Hinton had it for a moment and then lost it. Looked like the ball banged off his chest, and by the time he re-clutched it, yep, right there. Good call by the officials. That, Jack, you see a lot of baseball. That was a high, hard one. Yes. That was coming. A little chin music, they say, in baseball. But Terry Jordan plays baseball for NC State. That's right. You can see why. He's got a cannon. Second down and 10. Jordan putting it up frequently early. He's got his tight end hour, and he takes a lick, and he might have lost the football in there. No, he, well, he did lose it, but they're not going to give it to Jamal Ellis. The junior from Lancaster, Texas, came up and said hello. He gives up a lot of weight to Neil Hour, but a good stick by Jamal Ellis. And I tell you what, well, right there, but when the whistle was blowing, it's still equal possession. So that's why the offense maintained control of the football. And now Ellis is down. Play it ended, and he stood up, and then he came back down, and it looks like something with his right leg is the difficulty. Hours, 5 and 250. He's having a marvelous year blocking as well as catching the football. He's a co-captain. His uh, brother Scott was a co-captain. Jamal Ellis gives away about 65 pounds in that collision. Might have had his leg twisted underneath him as he wrestled with the ball wrestled for the ball. Watch, he's just part of the stack, and yeah, right there, the one leg, his left leg was extended, but the right leg was kind of bent underneath, and now he's jogging off a little bit, trying to shake off the effects of that. It might have been a slight hyperextension or something of that nature. Jordan has now thrown four balls and completed three of them for 30 yards. They've all been underneath. You keep waiting for him to air out the home run toss. Third down and three, State needs the 30-yard line. Peter's got a big opening to the 21-yard line. First and 10, Wolfpack, 12 yards for the senior from Georgia. Anthony Barber's had the great year. Anthony Barber on the threshold of a 1,000-yard season. And the Duke defense very obviously keying on the Wolfpack tailback 
That's enabled Maynard on two carries now to have lots of running room. Greg hangs onto the ball this time and puts it down near the 20. Neil Auer in the slot to the top. Anthony Barber with some running room, and it closes down very quickly. Darrell Spells made the stop a year ago. He was second in the conference in tackles. He's a four-year starter. He's on that all-time tackle list, not only in uh, Duke history, but ACC history. He's a fine one. Second down at five. 714 clock moving. Left in the first quarter. No score from NC State. This is Mayner again. Greg inside the five. Mayner into the end zone. Touchdown, Wolfpack. 16 yards. And the fourth touchdown rushing for Mayner. Excellent block by Sean Johnson, number 77, the left guard for the Wolfpack. Watch the left side of your screen. Right there on the middle linebacker, Scott Verdan. And that gave Big Greg more than enough of a highway to roll it into the end zone. Steve Vitatek, electrical engineering major. Slips that one through the uprights, and NC State on top, 7-0, with exactly seven minutes left in the first quarter. Maynard's a load, 240-plus. I mean, you got to get a hold of him to bring him down. Look right there by Sean Johnson, turned for Dan around, and by the time he was able to recover, Maynard was gone, and he just carried number 18 or number 19 that was T. Edwards, the free safety, the rest of the way into the end zone, but the key block was by Johnson. The NC State running game, we talked about that a little bit in our pregame activities, averaging about 190 yards a ball game, it is the best rushing output per game in the Dick Sheridan era. Certainly a Greg Maynard and an Anthony Barber are significant factors, but the offensive line doing as good a job as they have ever done during Dick's tenure here. Like I said, you've got the veterans like Ward and G up front, but Richard freshman George Hegeman has been a load. Sean Johnson, who we've featured there, and Eric Taylor, a pair of juniors on the left side, have all combined to really create the balance that NC State wanted in their offense. One of the interesting things about the, the complexion early of this football game, as you look at Breedlove back, he is one of the nation's leader in kick returns, is that NC State has used the pass to set up the run, different than they normally do. Duke ordinarily likes to use the pass to open up the running lanes, but uh, today it is State with Terry Jordan firing away. 6 into the football. In the direction of Goldman. He went 58 yards the first time he had, and he's got room again. Goldman across midfield, bounced out of bounds at about the 45 of NC State. Sebastian Savage perhaps prevented a score, and there's a leak on the left side of the return. Well, it's obvious that the Duke coaching staff saw something on the right side of the kick coverage of NC State. And it was Savage, the safety, who denied the touch here. Two good kickoff returns and a fumble recovery. Duke has got to start to be able to convert, or they're going to see this game slip away from them in a hurry. 38-yard return coupled with the 58-yard return. Even I can figure that one out. He's averaging 48 yards, is Gallman. They do a little hitch pass. Wide is Stanley Dorsey, and he'll lose a couple yards. Dwayne Washington, the junior from Durham, came up and said, no, sir. Well, Dan Clark is out there, the tight end, to try and provide like a one-man screen for Stanley Dorsey. And Dwayne Washington did such a good job of shedding the block and making the good tackle. We talked about that in our broadcast last week. Great open field tackling ability from all four members of the state secondary. Cuthbert trying to cut it back. And he'll get about a yard. Ricky Logo, he's 6'1 and 280 pounds. He's a nose, but he moves from sideline to sideline. Little extracurricular how do you do's from Dwayne Washington and Ray Wright at the end of this play. But just as Drew indicated, Ricky Logo scraping down the line of scrimmage from his nose tackle middle guard position and stopping Cuthbert. Third and long. Now it's third and a bunch. They need the 39-yard line. 
Fisher has time. Now it's breaking down. He's going deep and over the head. Trying to get it to Breedlove. And Duke will have to punt the football away. Spence Fisher in the scramble situation did a good job of avoiding the pressure. He had one of those tough decisions to make. He didn't have a clear path to first down. Tried to see if he could throw the home run ball, and I don't think Breedlove expected him to throw it that deep. Tim Davis having a good year, averaging almost 41 yards a punt. And Ricky Turner is back deep. And this will get in the end zone. 50 yards on the punt, 5-21 to go in the first quarter. State leading it 7-0 at home. They have a shot at a 10-win season. They're currently 7-2-1 and, and ranked 14th in the nation. We're back at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, along with Mike Hogwood, Jack Corrigan, I'm Drew Goodman, seven to nothing. NC State leading it. They have the football again at their own 20-yard line. Scores from around the ACC. Clemson, an early field goal against the Terrapins. Temple will lose by a lot more than that score this afternoon against the top-ranked Canes and uh, Michigan. A touchdown up on the Fighting Illini. Seven to nothing, our score here. Terry Jordan, the most accurate passer in uh, state history, will be sacked there. He won't get an opportunity. Warren Scoville get him, and they got a big surge up the middle, Jack. Well, you have to give the credit to Dale Strum, his defensive coaching staff, the defensive coordinator for Duke, said, hey, they're running the, they're, they're running the opposite of what we expect. They're throwing the ball on first down, so we're going to blitz on first down. They got Scoville up the middle. They got Marks, or did make it spells from the outside. Big loss after State had had great success on first down. Terry Jordan was not sacked at all last week against uh, Chris Slade and company of Virginia. Here's Barber on the delay, and Barber will get a couple of those yards back, but not much. Warren Scoville again will get up last. The 6'5", 265-pound senior from Ardmore, Pennsylvania. That should put Barber right near the 1,000-yard mark. He is at 999. He's not going to get it on this play as he comes out. Aubrey Shaw has checked into the football game, number 22, a senior. Barber's out. Third down and 15, the 30-yard line. Shaw with it, and he'll be four yards short. So Duke's defense holds. And Duke will get the football back, late first quarter trailing. Well, that first down play was the crucial play here for the Duke defense. The 10-yard sack really changed what NC State wanted to do. They had to become much more conservative. They should get, that is, Duke should get pretty good field position after the punt by Jim Kilpatrick. Keith DuBose is back at his own 37-yard line, awaiting Kilpatrick's punt. Duke sets up a return, and this is a monster boot. From the 27th goes DuBose. And he's tripped up at the 43-yard line. A punt of 47, a return of 15. Carlos Pruitt was down on special team back. Duke, after their lackluster performance last week against uh, the Demon Deacons, they had a very good week of practice. In fact, some of the coaches were telling us, Ted, that there were fights in practice, great intensity, and you wouldn't expect that with a club that is obviously playing out the string at 2-7. and seven. Comes in motion. They get to the fullback, and Robert Baldwin will have a couple of yards before he's thrown backwards. Well, so far, the Duke offensive line is losing the battle against the defensive front of NC State. There just has not been much running room for either Robert Baldwin or the tailback, Randy Cuthbert. Duke had really had great success running the ball earlier in the year, but it has gotten more and more difficult for them as the season has progressed. Their starting left guard, Steve Aldifer, is banged up. He's Aaron Collins has stepped in. Big play and a sack. The big little guy, Carl Reeves. What a play. Tenth 
sack of the year for Reeves, the 219-pound defensive tackle. That's right, only 219. Well, Logo forced Fisher out of the pocket, and Carl Reeves had too much quickness for Brandon Moore, the left tackle. Big loss on the play. He is a remarkable story, and he's got a couple of more years yet to play in a Wolfpack uniform. pick up about seven or eight yards but it'll be well shy of the first down dan clark the tight end hauls it in but the crowd appreciates that state defense tell you what the difference has been on first down for duke they have had five first down plays on the day for a total of six yards they've got to do a much better job of that on first down or you just play right into the hands of the state defense back deep is liddell george and he has got the distance before 10 men up on the line of scrimmage for nc state george is back at his 15. this one will get over his head into the end zone another strong kick by davis this one 54 yards so on a couple of punts he's averaging 52 yards a minute 12 left to go in the first quarter. State leads it 7-0. They had a 40-yard drive following an interception by Ricky Turner. There's Anthony Barber, just one yard shy of going over 1,000. He'll be the first back in state history to do that, assuming he does. Go McIntosh back in 1983. to take the football out of his chest because it might have been embedded there after that hit by Mike Stallmeyer. Daryl Spells helping out Mike Stallmeyer. There's Joe McIntosh who played in the early 80s here at NC State. He was an exciting running back for the Wolfpack and a little bigger player than Barber, but Anthony has had a fine career and this is best season here in Raleigh. think they'll give him two which will put him at an even grand James Kirkland brought him down a thousand yards I believe for Anthony Barber yep officially there it is six yards a carry you know Jack Rear 5.4 carry which is best all time better than Ted Brown averaging his fine career here in Raleigh and the crowd now gets the official word third down and nine for State. Oh, nearly picked off and hauled in by Hinton. And Hinton's all the way inside the 30-yard line to the 27. It looked for all the world like that was going to be a touchdown the other way. Well, Terry Jordan, among the most efficient of quarterbacks in NC State history, Robert Hinton slow to get up as I think he fell on the football. The final play of the first quarter, State turns what looked like disaster into a goal line. 53 yards for NC State. ACC football is brought to you in part by your local Toyota dealers. I love what you do for me, Toyota. We're at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. NC State pleasing the home folks. They're up 7-0 after the first quarter. Drew Goodman, Jack Korg, and Mike Hogwood. Look at this play. Here looks, the interception. Looks like T. Edwards has got the interception. Went right through his hands. Good concentration by Robert Hinton. Then at the end of the play, as he got tackled, he fell heavily on his right shoulder. And that's why the junior from Garner left the ball game. We'll try and get a report on his condition. Jordan is a 5 of 6 for 93 yards in the early going. He gets to the fullback, and Maynard rumbles to the 20-yard line. 
While we have a moment, let's go downstairs, visit with Mike Hogwood. Mike? Well, Drew, as soon as Anthony Barber got the thousand yards, a couple of equipment guys went out on the field and grabbed the football. It will not see any more action today. They're going to put it for posterity underneath the bench, and of course, uh, this will be something that will be treasured by Anthony Barber for a lifetime. All right, Mike, now somebody has to go up and grab that football away from you because, uh, well, you know Hogwood, he might just take that home back to Greensboro with him. David Wafel is the injured Duke player getting an assist off the field. Wafel playing for Scott Yeomans. His injury in the Maryland game, a big blow to that Duke defense. Yeomans, an outstanding defensive lineman for the Blue Devils. He was an honors candidate, but... Uh, you see the 1,000-yard rushers in NC State uh, history. Anthony Barber now joins that fine group. Ted Brown, of course, did it three consecutive years. Mentioning Wafel, coaching staff very pleased with uh, his productivity this year. He has 14 tackles behind the line of scrimmage for the Blue. Well, in the previous play, the pickup by, Anth uh, by uh, Greg Maynard, the contact between he and Scott Verdan, I mean, it was a cruncher. We could hear all the way up here on the top of the stadium. Verdan gives way in terms of weight to Maynard. Maynard at 241 and Verdan only at 235. Second down to four trips or three receivers to the top of the formation. Jordan looking in zone, Anthony Barber. Hello, touchdown, Wolfpack. three, Anthony Barber ran straight up the hash, and John Thomas, the strong safety, was just late getting there. Right between the two safeties, Jackson and Thomas. Need attack on to tack on the 14th point. Right down the heart. When you go to the four receiver set like NC State did on that play, you, you really jackpot the safeties because you have spread out the defense and they've got to try and make a choice. And you can see that both Thomas and Jackson just didn't get there quick enough because it was a sharp, quick toss by Terry Jordan, who is six of seven on the day now, and he is having himself another Jordan-like game, 113 yards on those six completions, and Anthony Barber shows you he could be versatile as well, catching the ball as well as running it into the end zone. His first touchdown receiving this year is seventh overall. Mike, what do you have for us? Well, the only fear on the sidelines for State today is Robert Hinton. He has a separated shoulder and will not be back today. What they're concerned about is uh, in the next couple of weeks for NC State and his availability, but he's definitely out for the rest of this game. Now they've got Eddie Goins who separated his shoulder a couple of weeks ago against Clemson and he's back in the lineup but not quite 100 percent so they're a little thin at the wide receiver spot which makes it tough sometimes Drew because they like to run that three and four receiver set when they can. Vita Tech not 60 will kick this one off. Gallman and Breedlove are back deep. Breedlove among the nation's leaders in kick returns, but it's been Gallman today. He's had two, averaging 48 yards, 158, 138. And again, it is Gallman from the nine. And he can't spin out of that tackle, and he's dropped at the 26-yard line. Normal return there, just 17 yards. It is incumbent upon the uh, Blue Devils right here to put something together and get some points on the board. That was Walt Girard who saved the touchdown on the opening kickoff who made the tackle again, but you're right, they've had good field position up until this point in the game, and Fence Fisher has not been able to take advantage of it, partly because they've just been very unproductive on first down. Fisher 5 of 14 last week for 92 yards against Wake Forest, and then he was pulled, and so far today, he's not going to get it downfield. And he's a little low and away for Breedlove there on the crossing pattern. 
Ran the delay route with the wide receiver underneath, and Brad Breedlove had some running room, but with pressure in his face, Spence Fisher did not make the kind of throw he wanted to. You see the numbers so far, just the 15 yards and the costly interception that helped set up NC State's first score. From a defensive perspective, Buddy Gray and the coordinator for NC State's got to love this. Second and ten, you're a lot more predictable than you are when it's second and four or five. The delay, nothing doing. Duke can't get a running game going at all today. Well, credit a lot to that guy, the big man in the middle there, number 90, Ricky Logo. He did that to Virginia last week. Virginia had some success early in the game running the football, but then that got away from the Cavaliers. And Logo's the kind of guy that blocks things up the same Robert Baldwin got three. They need the 37-yard line. Fisher across the middle, best throw of the ball game, and Ray Wright running the dig route, picks up 17 yards. Good throw, good route. Well, Spence Fisher actually falling away a little bit as he throws his ball as he feels the pressure. But Ray Wright able to get away from Dwayne Washington enough to catch the ball. A former running back who they've moved to wide receiver and done a pretty good job making the transition. Two receivers to the near side and Fisher comes out in the shotgun. Cuthbert will cross midfield and then he stood straight up. John Aikens, 96, the first to get a hold of him. As you look at Barry Wilson. This time they ran the delay as delayed as you could make it. You can see how patient Cuthbert was trying to find some space to get some running room. That's as productive of a running play as they have had on a first down today. Just 18 yards rushing for Cuthbert on seven attempts. There have not been a lot of lanes for him. 37 with the football, could score. Kaya all the way to the one yard line. Ed Kaya, one of the backup tight ends who has been inserted into the ball game because of an injury to John Jensen. His dad, Bill Kayad, of course, coached in the NFL for the Philadelphia Eagles. This ball was deflected, and Kayad still came up with it. And it was only Ricky Turner's effort, along with Dwayne Washington, that kept him out of the end zone. 47 yards on the pass. They marked the ball inside the three. to the line of scrimmage if that. Keith Battle closed quickly from an outside linebacker position. This is going to be tough for Duke here to punch it into the end zone because they have not gotten the push on scrimmage against that NC State defensive front. And they don't really have an option attack to their offense. Is this a throwing down here? I, I think so. Some kind of play action look here. I think, well, it's a one back right now. They go double tight end. The lone setback is ball when he gets the football and Logo catches him and stops him just shy of the goal line. It'll set up a third goal at about the one. And they went with the two tight ends here to spread that defensive front a little bit. They gave the ball to Baldwin. Logo scraping down the line. Stood him up at the one yard line. John Aikens also in to make sure that the goal line was not crossed and the fans come to their feet here at Carter Finley. Third and goal, again they go double tight end. The long setback is Baldwin. Baldwin, football, I don't know, very close. No indication he is not in. It'll be fourth down and I don't think you have a question of what you do here. If you're Barry Wilson, you're two and seven, you gotta go for it. You're down 14 nothing, don't you? Well, there's no doubt about that because they'll bring Cuthbert and Kayad back into the ball game. This was Carl Reeves. We went from the big guy, Ricky Logo. He had a piece of it as well, but it was Carl Reeves, the smallest of the defensive linemen who held his ground. And now Duke is going to take a timeout to make certain they are about a foot or less from the end zone. But it's an end zone that has not been breached too often this year. There's a good shot of Reeves. Only 14 touchdowns allowed in 10 games, or 
less than one and a half touchdowns a ball game. That's a big reason why NC State is 7-2-1. And, and in this football game right here, the Duke Blue Devils have to score here. They, they, they need the touchdown emotionally as much as just in terms of sheer numbers. Sure. I'll give you an interesting stat. I'll do that after uh, we do this business with you. We'll be, uh, oh, in Durham, a few miles away, as Duke and Carolina get together. North Carolina, in all probability, headed uh, to the postseason, playing bowl. And uh, check your local listing, because some of you will see the Clemson Tigers in their annual get-together with the Gamecocks of South Carolina, one of the great turnarounds in college football this year. The coup is over, and everything's uh, okay in the castle for South Carolina. Yeah, they only need, what is that, about 10 inches? The point I was going to make with the NC State defense as compared to Duke, NC State has given up only 44 yet left yards this year per game than Duke, yet 22 left touchdowns. Here we go, fourth and goal. Cuthbert is in, the deep man in the eye. Play action, easy touchdown. Dan Clark calls it in. Good call by Eddie Wilson, the offensive coordinator, and a good job of selling the play fake by Spence Fisher and Randy Cuthbert right there. You can see that number 73 on the front of that NC State defense, Mike Harrison, the freshman, he bit on it. He was down on his knees. That gave Fisher time to wait for Dan Clark to break free. So it's a fruitful timeout for Barry Wilson. Randy Gardner will try to make it a seven-point ball game, and he does so. 14 to seven, Duke comes back. They needed to answer, and they put together a long drive, 73 yards on the drive, and they get a big play from Bill Kayak on a long pass play down to the three, and Duke is back in it, now 14 to solid. 14 to 7, state leading Duke. We're uh, just beginning to get wild. And this is one of the reasons we have some uh, outstanding shots. Mike Sheehan, we booted him out of the way, and the Wolf in their running show. Just picture the Wolf. He's doing his job. This is Lawrence from the four. And he'll get to the 34 yard line. A return of 30 by Reggie Lawrence, the senior from Camden, New Jersey. Jamal Ellis brought him down. Good news. Jamal, uh, who was hurt earlier in the ball game, is back in there at a cornerback for the Blue Devils. You know, NC State responds to the Duke drive where they cut the lead in half. Jordan's been superb here in the first half. Barber and Maynard are behind Jordan. And here's Barber with the football, and he breaks a tackle and ends up picking up about four yards. Sean Thomas came up from his free safety position. Other scores from around the country. Another field goal by Clemson. Welsh has two, a 52-yarder the second, and uh, Maryland hanging in there right now. Miami uh, starting to put the herd on Temple. Temple has struggled this season. Michigan still 7-0 with the Fighting Illini in Ann Arbor. South Carolina and Florida just getting going. Well, Anthony Barber, a short pickup, maybe a yard. I was going to say, there is little question here this afternoon, Drew, that the Duke defensive philosophy is that Anthony Barber is not going to beat them, at least on the ground anyway. He has scored a touchdown here, but they have limited Jordan to not much productivity here in the first half. Third down and six. They need the 44. That's a drop football, and Duke's defense holds NC State three and out. I don't know if Liddell George would have gotten the first down anyway, because James Kirkland arrived at the same moment that the football did. And number 94 for the Blue Devils made certain that Kilpatrick had to punt it again for the Wolfpack. There's DuBose back deep, the senior from Sarasota, Florida. He's at his own 20-yard line. Duke setting up a return, and this is a wobbly line drive. DuBose has some room. He's trying to get to the wall. 
Bose slides down at the 35. If somehow, some way, he could have kept his pins, he might still be running. 13-yard return, a 38-yard kick by Kilpatrick. There's some special team coaches on both sides wringing their hands about kick coverage because every kick today, kickoff or punt, has been returned for some substantial yardage. It's one of the things Dick Sheridan was concerned about coming into this football game. Duke is second in the ACC, both in kick returns and punt returns. So they are very productive on special teams. Cuthbert with some room to the 40-yard line, an advance of five, and that is his longest run of the afternoon. Damon Covington brought him down. Well, you're having trouble running the football between the tackles. A quick toss sweep this time to Randy Cuthbert. Good open field tackle by Damien Dinner. It would have been more than five. First time, Jack, uh, this afternoon, that, or one of the first times that they've had enough yards on first down that they have some options on second down. Fisher on the sprint out. He's got to complete it to stick territory. Hauling it in is Dorsey, 81, the junior from Baltimore. Stanley Dorsey running the curl route. You want to talk about experience, watch the top of your screen. Randy Cuthbert just catching a piece of Carl Reeves there. Otherwise, Reeves will break up this play. That's just great vision by Cuthbert. He's going out to the right side to be a swing receiver, but he saw the heat coming and got enough on him to give Fisher the time to throw the ball. the football and Reeves has it and Reeves could score. Oh Reeves the sophomore from Durham. No flags. Mike Harrison the freshman with the pop. Carl Reeves with the recovery and 45 yards later NC State is up again by two scores. Watch number 73. Boom. The ball gets free. Reeves picks it up. There is nobody but Spence Fisher, and he is already trailing the speedy defensive tackle. The first touchdown in the college career of Carl Reeves. 47 yards officially, and you said it. The speedy defensive tackle at 219 pounds. He might be the swiftest defensive tackle in college football. Vita Tech gets it through 21 to 7. You think Jeff Snipes, the defensive line coach, is happy? A true freshman makes the pop. A true sophomore makes the recovery for a touchdown. Those guys are going to be around for a while. Harrison has played very, very well this year. What a big play because Duke was uh, starting to move the football and Spence Fisher's confidence had been growing since uh, the touchdown a few moments ago. So Duke, again, down by two scores in Raleigh. 21-7, NC State leading by two touchdowns. Buddy Green's defense has done it again for the third straight week in the 11th time in the last three years they score a defensive touchdown. Well, it was Mike Harrison, the true freshman, who just beat Jerome Egg, the freshman, or make it the sophomore center for the Duke Blue Devils, and sophomore Carl Reeves picked it up and cruised 45 yards with a score. Three defensive touchdowns in the last game and a half for the NC State defense. Greedlove has changed sides with Greedlove has moved to the top of your screen. They're trying to get in the football. This is hit high and short. One of the upbacks will take it at the 23. And he'll get it out to about the 33-yard line. It's uh, Gavin Gray, backup free safety, who made the uh, play. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation and the use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. You read that so well. Thank you. Spence Fisher, uh, in the game, we're talking about his confidence growing, throwing the football. Guess who? Carl Reeves and Mike Pitt, two guys who teamed up on the last play, the young defensive tackles. Watch Harrison slide off his man, make first contact. Reeves from behind, and Keith Battle on the top. 
You get away from Ricky Logo, but your troubles don't end. Sets up one of those second and long situations. Ball tapped and falls harmlessly to the turf. The 21, William Strong, was closest on the rebound. He's a corner for State, and it'll be third and 10. Trying to find Brad Breedlove down the middle. Let's see who gets a piece of this pass from Fisher. It's Damian Covington sliding by. Again, that's what we talk about. You want to attack the middle because it's vulnerable throwing the football. But the longer the play takes to, to, to develop when you throw it down the middle, the more something like that is going to happen. Third and ten for the Blue Devils. They go out of the shotgun. Tight ends Clark, but I think he is going to be about a yard short of the first down particularly with the spot they're getting now. Tyler Lawrence made the tackle and covered him up right there. It indeed will be fourth down, and Fisher wants to stay on the field, but uh, Barry Wilson thinks better of it. Maryland has scored a touchdown in the second quarter. The quarterback, Kaleo, from a yard out, sneaks in, and Maryland right now leading 7-6. Liddell George is back deep, and Tim Davis will punt the football. And again, 10 men on the line of scrimmage for NC State. They back out of it. This is returnable. George comes up to the 25. And he'll get to the 40-yard line. 34 yards on the punt, but the net is only 19 after the 15-yard return. Good field position for NC State. And we head downstairs to Mike Hogwood. Well, Drew, you and Jack may have noticed, and I'm sure you have, that if there's a vulnerability on this state team, it's in the special teams. It's something that has plagued them all year long, even in the Iowa game. You may have noticed on that last state kickoff, they decided to take the run back away entirely. They put Jimmy Sixi in, who's great at hitting those kickoffs straight up in the air, so there is not much of a run back. Thank you, Mike. 6 one to go, second quarter. 21-7, Wolf Pack, Jordan looking for more flags by Barber has it. the football. Duke's on it if it stands. Keep in mind, a flag came down in the area of motion or procedure against the offense. Could be one of those good news, bad news situations. Bad news for Duke. Offside. Well, the good news for uh, NC State is they'll hold on to the football. The bad news is They'll wipe out a great play by Barber until he dropped the football. Jamal Ellis was a guy going for the ride who got the football away from Anthony Barber. Somebody just lined up offside. Scott Berdan came up with the ball, but it doesn't Offsides, matter. Offsides, defense, first down. Well, there were some problems in terms of the alignment for the Blue Devils before that snap you could you, you could see him jumping around a little bit trying to set themselves in the alignment they wanted and apparently somebody ventured into the neutral zone Very good. Boy, there's the flag a face mask that was easy to call david wafel reached out and ripped anthony barber to the turf the only problem is he had a hold of the metal bars well you reach out to grab a guy and you could see with Barber at just 5'9 and ducking his head even more that it happens they're going to make this the 5 yard or the 15 yard infraction it will be the 15 yard infraction personal foul face mask defense first down generally the rule of thumb on that penalty is if the tackle is made because of the face mask grab it's the major walk off if there is just a grab of the mask in the course of a tackle, then it's the five-yard walk-off. Aubrey Shaw has checked into the backfield. Anthony Barber will uh, try to get it straight on the sideline. Looks like the reverse is coming. This is read by Duke very well. It's going to be a huge loss, a loss of 15. Eddie Goins, the first time we've
we've been able to call his name this afternoon, coming back from that separated shoulder, and he says, gee, thanks, guys. Where's the blocking? Well, they had the blitz on, and they ran right into the blitz. You can see number 45, Daryl Spells, and number 99, Dwayne Marks, coming hard on the play as they try and run the reverse to Eddie Goins, but it fooled no one wearing the white and blue of Duke. Second down and 25, so that 15-yard uh, penalty quickly erased. Jordan slips as he's throwing, and this one winds up on the turf, as does number 17. He slipped because David Wayville unloaded on him. Watch the left side of your screen. Slip and then boom. Made sure that Terry was not going to get a good delivery on that one. He is now 6 of 9 on the afternoon. I'm pretty impressed with Wafo. We told uh, you off the top that the coaching staff said he was having a terrific year. He's been uh, very active on that defensive line for the Blue Devils. You got to remember that Duke does not list the guys by their richer years, but by their class years. So that's a young defensive unit. Jordan gets it to Aubrey Shaw, who will be well short of a first down. James Kirkland makes the tackle and NC State will have to punt the football. And you go back to that reverse. That reverse is through. Kirkland is down right now. He made the play. But you go back to that reverse, it's a big defensive play for Duke because down by two touchdowns with 4.37 remaining in the second quarter, they cannot hide by any more if they're gonna have thoughts of winning this game. James Kirkland, let's see what happened. Yeah, it looked like some time during the rollover on that that he had something go out of alignment but he's up and around again don't you love when we're sitting up here and we have to give you a diagnosis from 200 yards away watching it in slow mo that looks like his knee no his ankle no, his back is twisted there whatever it is it's well, good news because kirkland's shocking off and you want to you want to be real careful about your analysis too because you've got all those uh, family and friends out there worried about it you don't want to say something that isn't accurate that's why we had John up here to take care of us. All right, Dr. John. Or was he a lawyer? I can't remember. Well practicing. That's his specialty. Breedlove is in to return the punt. This is not a good punt. Off the side of the... But the result won't be all that bad. It goes out of bounds at the 19-yard line, just a 26-yard punt. So Duke has the football trailing by 14 points with 4.11 left in the first half. Along with Mike Hogwood, Jack Corrigan, I'm Drew Goodman. We'll return to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina after we take this time out. 21 to 7 on our ACC game of the week. 4-11 left before halftime. Duke has the football, and obviously they need some points. You ask what is coming up at halftime, we tell you. We'll have the best of the ACC, one for the book, scores and highlights. We'll take a look at the career of Jess Atkinson, our Jeff At uh, Jess Atkinson. All of that coming up at intermission. Mike Hogwood will take you through most of that. 4-11 to go before intermission. Two receivers come to the top of the screen for Duke. Fisher, oh! Breaking on the football was Tyler Lawrence, and he said, I might get in the end zone for the second straight week. Tried to look to his right, did Spence Fisher, to throw back to his left to Robert Baldwin and Tyler Lawrence, who picked off a very similar play for a score a week ago, as Drew said, nearly had his second in weeks. Senior from Greensboro, 6'5 and 240. Well, he has the size to play on the outside. In fact, he has the size to play wherever he wants to. Blitz coming. Cuthbert has it out of the backfield, and it's a very minimal game. Boy, NC State really runs so well. Carl Reeves, the defensive tackle, started upfield and ends up making the play on the sideline. Well, I don't know if they have the overall team speed of the Florida State defense, but you're right, Drew. They have good quickness, and maybe as important or more important, they have good football sense. They, they recognize quickly and adjust. You mentioned Reeves. He felt the screen, knew where to go. Second down and nine. They need the 
29 yard line. Check that, third down and nine. Fisher time and somehow Turner doesn't have the football and Ray Wright catches it. Well, you tell a wide receiver when he has a defensive player on his back to try and shield him like a guy does blocking out on a rebound. And Ray Wright got enough of his body on Ricky Turner that when Ricky went up over the top, he couldn't touch the football. And Wright makes his second catch of the afternoon to keep the Duke drive alive. Clock moving, 3.45 left before intermission. So plenty of time for Duke. They need a touchdown. Baldwin spinning off of tacklers. Damon Covington will get credit. But Damian Covington, what a pop. He's already got nine tackles this afternoon, 21 last week. And we told you he averages 16 and a half. I mean, that'll give you a sore shoulder. 16 and a half as a starter. And the guy next to him, David Merritt, leads the ACC in tackles. Toss sweep, Cuthbert. He's got the corner. Cuthbert will have the first down into NC State territory. Well, they caught the Wolfpack defense trying to make a shift. Keith Battle didn't know where to go. He started on the left side, started to run to the right side, started to run back to the left when they snapped the football. And they ran right in the area that he vacated. Behind P.J. Shunk, the pulling guard on the play, Cuthbert got around the corner and picked up the first down. Pretty good job by Battle because uh, even though he didn't know what direction he was going in, he ended up making the tackle. The number is early on Cuthbert. The NC State defense has done a great job of corralling. Fisher sliding out of the backfield is Cuthbert. He wisely gets as much as he can and then steps out of bounds, stopping the clock. David Merritt ushered him at a 13-yard pickup. 238 left before intermission, and Duke is on the move. This is a football team, Jack, and you hate to say this, but their record is truly misleading. They've been in a number of football games. They just can't make big plays when they need to. Well, as Dick Sheridan talked about right at the beginning, I mean, they should have won the game against Maryland. They were flat last week against Wake and still had chances to be in that game. They played well at Clemson. They should have won at Georgia Tech. Cuthbert winds his way to the 30-yard line. A strong advance on first down. Give him seven yards before the free safety Ricky Turner brought him down. Now you're into the spot on the field where the NC State defense starts to gamble a little bit. And it was a good play call that time by the Duke offensive staff. But Cuthbert picked up seven. A little more guesswork for the pack because it's second down and shoot down at three. And Fisher will change the play. Cuthbert waits for his blockers and then moves it to the 26 yard line and they'll move the chains. Another first down for the Blue Devils. Mike Reed, the strong safety, who gets involved in the running game very frequently, will get credit for the tackle. Trying to set up Baldwin in front of him to make the block, but Reed was able to shake off Robert Baldwin. Cuthbert was able to lunge forward, however, and get the first down. The clock stops momentarily. Now 1.40 to play in the first half. Duke with just two timeouts remaining. by Sebastian Savage. The honorable mention All-American a year ago. He was a first-team Atlantic Coast Conference pick. Now, we have not yelled Sebastian's name very much today because, as a rule, people don't throw at double S too often. He made a good tackle on one of the Goldman kickoff returns. Mechanical engineering major. 120 left, second down, 10. He was trying to get it to 37. Kayat, who made the big play setting up the lone Duke touchdown earlier in the half. So now it's third 10 with 114 left. 
we talk about NC State, this is where they play their strongest defense. Well, what they did on play is they convinced Spence Fisher that they were coming with the all-out blitz, and he checked off to the fade route, couldn't complete it. That time they did blitz. Now he's stuck with a third and ten. And they, I bet, are coming again. Yes, they are. Covington's coming, and they got a safety blitz on. Complete to the 20-yard line. That's going to be short of a first down. Ray Farmer, backup tight end, a true freshman from Kernersville, North Carolina, hauls it in. And they'll call a timeout here and take a look at their options on fourth down and five. They rushed six on this play. So Fisher dumped it off to his tight end and another good tackle in the open field, Tyler Lawrence stopping Farmer shy of the first down with them, with Duke down two scores, two touchdowns. Tough decision here for Bear because he knows that NC State will get the football to start the second half. You've got a chance to cut it to a 21 to 10 game, but you've had your kicker Randy Gardner be very erratic this year. He has missed a 31 yard field goal already in this game. If he tried one here, it would be a 37 yard attempt. And he might feel that two and say, oh, here comes Gardner out onto the field. I thought maybe he'd say, hey, let's go for the first down. Maybe the other factor being through that with just the one timeout remaining, 55 seconds might not be enough time to put it in the end zone if you've got the first down. So well, Gardner will have to kick it from the near hash mark. And uh, he missed one when he had to pull one from the far hash mark 31 yards away, as Jack mentioned, in the first quarter. Actually, the opening possession of the game for Duke. So this one will be 37 yards out of the hold of Steve Prince. From this distance, he's three of six this year. So he overcompensates twice, and Duke comes up with nothing. Might have been their most impressive drive, obviously, other than the touchdown drive, which really occurred because of a big play, and Duke has no points to show for it. Well, it, it almost seems like this year against the NC State defense, you need a big play outside of the red zone, the scoring zone, to set it up. And that's what they got on the long pass to Kayette. They got it down inside the five-yard line. But when you have to drive it in from their field, it really seems like a most difficult uh, an assignment. Barber on the delay. And he gets it to the 26-yard line, give him five yards on that play. Anthony Barber, if you're just joining us, over 1,000 yards this season. He came in 11 yards shy of uh, going over a grand, and he is now well over 1,000 yards. The first back since Joe McIntosh in 1983 to eclipse 1,000 for the Wolfpack. Probably the fifth player in pack history. Slip screen to Barber, and he's met in the backfield, and he loses a couple of yards. And very fortunate that he was able to hold on to the football because Stallmeyer came clear from his blind side. And I think NC State will be content with a two-touchdown lead. And they'll head off to the locker room here at Carter-Finley Stadium, leading it 21-7. to And let's get downstairs to Mike Hogwood with Coach Sheridan. Mike? Well, Coach, 21 points. Uh, that's one thing you got to be happy about. Well, uh, the thing we're concerned about, they're really doing a good job against our running game. You know, we haven't been able to establish something solid on the running game. We have to do a better job of that in the second half. They also got a couple of kick returns on you. Anything you uh, notice while that happened? Well, they're leading the league in kick returns and you know we work real hard on it. you can't tell it but uh they're very dangerous and we just haven't done a good job of covering it uh they're blocking us we're not getting off blocks and uh they, their biggest plays have come off the kick returns i know you've been in enough of these state duke games to know that uh, the second half uh, there a lot can happen oh it's a lot they're so explosive you know we certainly have got to uh, we really got to improve offensively the second half and and try and get this thing out of reach because if we they stay within two touchdowns of us they can score so quickly that uh, we're in danger all right that's dick sheridan head coach of the nc state Wolfpack. his team leads the duke blue devils 21 to 7. we are at halftime and we'll be back with one for the books and all our halftime activities in just 
Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. By Lowe's, helping add value to your home. By BC, for powerful pain relief. BC Headache Powder. No matter where you're hurting, nothing works faster than BC Powder. By Shoney's Breakfast Bar, the best breakfast in town. And by Coors Light, the Silver Bullet is the right beer now. We're back at halftime. Connor Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. The NC State Wolfpack leading the Duke Blue Devils 21 to 7. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Hogwood. You may have heard Dick Sheridan a moment ago say he knows this game is far from over. He remembers, I think, that game a year ago, 32 to 31. His NC State Wolfpack pulling it out in the final minutes of it. Well, we've had some big plays in this game today, and it seems that NC State's character all year long and one of their keys to success has been big plays on defense. Carl Reeves, the sophomore from Durham, has tremendous quickness, and he shows it here as not only was he in on the sack, but he was able to pick up the football and take it in for a touchdown. One of three first-half touchdowns for the NC State Wolfpack, and again, they lead it 21-7. It's certainly a, a tremendous, tremendous play on the part of Carl Rees. Well, uh, some exciting things happening here at halftime. They're honoring the uh, 1967 team. And meanwhile, we'll tell you about the running game. Randy Cuthbert and Anthony Barber, the two standouts for each school, Cuthbert from Duke and Barber from NC State. And there you see that Cuthbert has 45 yards rushing. Now remember, if he gets 100 yards, Duke historically has been in pretty good shape. Amper only has 22 yards on the ground, but those 22 yards were certainly enough to propel him over 1,000 for the season. I think we're in store for a great second half, even the store 21 to seven now at halftime. We'll be back. More halftime activities are coming up here in Raleigh. It's time now to tell you about our Shoney's Player of the Week. Charlie Ward, the quarterback of Florida State, 111 yards rushing a week ago against Maryland, 395 yards in the air. Florida State has rarely had a better offensive day. They put 69 points on the board. Charlie Ward, our Shoney's Player of the Week. We're at halftime at Carter Finley Stadium, state leading Duke. I mentioned a moment ago that the 1967 team is being honored here at halftime. One of the stars on that team was kicker Gerald Warren, who year set an NCAA record for field goals in a season. Gerald, what's it like being back here and with your old teammates? Mike, it's a real pleasure to be back here. Many, many wonderful memories have been brought back at this reunion. And to be a member of the team that's considered as the greatest team in NC State football history, it's a real source of pride to all of us guys on that team. Yeah, I know you got to go. They're getting ready to honor you guys, so we'll let you go get gathered with your teammates. Thanks for taking a minute and stopping by and visiting with us at the Liberty Bowl team of 1967. All right, now it's time for us to go back in ACC history, one for the books, and let's talk about a former Maryland kicker who's now a pretty good ACC football announcer, Jess Atkinson. Delta, the airline of ACC country, is proud to bring you another ACC football one for the books. Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. The early 1980s was an exciting and prosperous time for Maryland football. Kicker Jess Atkinson was a major part of that excitement. His record of 93 consecutive extra points still stands today. Jess had the opportunity to kick in many big games, but he remembers one game in which he did more than just kick a game many consider the most memorable of that time. It was 1983, and Carolina was ranked three in the country, and they were undefeated, I think, and we, it was our test. I mean, we'd beaten them the year before, but this was kind of our test to see if, if it was a fluke. And they came in here, it was just before Halloween. It's my favorite game simply because, as a kicker, Kicking's boring. I mean, you go out there and you kick and you kick and it looks, I mean, your highlight film, I don't care if it's 20 yards or 50 yards, it looks the same. You do the same thing every time. So in that game, I recovered a fumble, I threw a block, I kicked a couple of field goals, and it came down to Stan Cavage throwing a, a, a pass flat, um, to one of his backs and just missed the hookup. And I remember the people assuming there was a minute left in the game. That, people were on the field immediately and that was the kind of atmosphere that it was and that was where it had built up to from when coach Ross had gotten here it took two years to do that 
Jess did more than make big plays. He was a high-spirited team player and a leader among his teammates. He realizes the importance of a kicker not separating himself from the rest of the team. One of the things that kickers, or at least I tried to do, is kind of take myself out of the prima donna role, out of the, hey, I'm the guy that comes in, and when I make it, I'm the guy that wins this game, because you know someday you're going to lose it. And you'd rather have guys give you a slap on the head positively when you miss it than give you a slap on the head and mean it if you miss it. It's just part of being more a part of... Jess Atkinson uh, was a player's kicker. Uh, and, and here's what I mean by that. He did everything that every other player did. Uh, the players loved him. Uh, normally, uh, kickers are kind of removed from the football team. Uh, Jess made it a real point to be a part of that football team. In all of the places that I've been, I've never seen a kicker who contributed more to the leadership of the football program than what Jess Atkinson did. And how does Jess Atkinson feel about his years at Maryland? For me, it was a dream come true. The other side of that is there are a lot of kids that can kick. And this is, this is an important thing you learn along the way, too. There are so many people that can kick that never get the chance. There are so, people, so many people that can catch that never get the chance and throw that never get the chance. You just feel lucky and blessed that you got a chance to do this. This has been another AC1 for the books, brought to you by Delta Airlines. We love to fly, and it shows. Jess Atkinson, a former kicker at Maryland and now a successful local television broadcaster in the Washington, D.C. area. And sometimes you'll see him on our ACC Games of the Week. Well, as we do each week at halftime, let's take a look now at some of the statistical leaders around the Atlantic Coast Conference. It's time now for the Diet Pepsi, best of the ACC. Natron Means, still the league's leading rusher. The Tar Heel averaging over 100 yards a game. Anthony Barber of NC State's number two. The league's leading receiver, Marcus Badgett, the big part of that run-and-shoot offense of the Maryland Terrapins. John Kaleo, the quarterback at Maryland, is the total offense leader. Charlie Ward of Florida State's number two. David Merritt of NC State is the league's leading tackler. And that is the Diet Pepsi, best of the ACC. Halftime at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina State leads Duke 21 to 7. We'll be back, but first these words from your local ACC station. Now it's time for the Jefferson Pilot Scoreboard, brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. Stability is just one of our benefits. And on our scoreboard this afternoon, Maryland, look at that, would you, in College Park, second quarter. John Kaleo having a great game, 20 to 9 is the score. Number one, Miami, all over Temple at halftime. Third ranked Michigan having a pretty tough battle with the Fighting Illini at 7-6. That is at halftime. Our score here in Raleigh, 21 to 7, NC State over Duke. If you've seen these games over the past couple of years, you know the second half could bring us anything. And to find out what might happen and to get an analysis of the first half, let's go upstairs now to our series, Drew Goodman and Jack Corrigan. Okay, Mike, thanks very much. Yes, if you follow the recent history of this game, just about anything could happen in the final 30 minutes. When we look at the numbers here, you're going to see something strange. Duke has outgained NC State today, and they, they did it against Clemson. They did it against Georgia Tech. Their problem is scoring. In the Ford halftime stats, just as Drew was talking about there, an eight-yard difference, but the two missed field goals and the turnover that turned into a touchdown, the difference for NC State, pretty much the way they have done it all year. This is almost a carbon copy of last week, and we'll see how the, the second half goes. The difference being that NC State got their scores early in this game with their offense, and they got it with not Anthony Barber carrying the football, but Greg Maynard got a good block from Sean Johnson on Scott Perdan, the middle linebacker, and the 240-pound fullback did the rest to put stayed up seven to nothing after Duke had squandered a chance on a kickoff return. They came back and found Anthony Barber catching the football rather than running the football. Found a hole between the two safeties. That made it 14 to nothing. 
And then Duke finally came back and got in a fourth down at the one yard line, actually inside the one. They call a timeout. They go play action. It was a good call because Dan Clark came free in the end zone. At that point, it was 14 to seven. The difference in this football game, obviously, the sack and Carl Reeves rumbling 47 yards the other way, but State puts that in their game plan every week, don't they? We'll come back, State leading 21 to seven. coverage of the Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by your Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon's Phase 4 gasoline and Superflow motor oil. By Pepsi and caffeine-free Pepsi. Gotta have it. By Buick and your Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By Southern National, the bank for tax advantage loans. And by Schlitz Malt Liquor. Try new Schlitz Malt Liquor Genuine Draft. The draft that's more than a beer. You'll like it like this. And we welcome you back to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, where the Wolfpack leads 21 and over the Duke Blue Devils. And the Wolfpack trying to uh, own the neighborhood. They beat North Carolina five straight times, and they're trying to make it five in a row against Duke. Duke, as we just showed you, more total offense, but they are struggling to put points on the board as they have struggled all year. Drew Goodman along with uh, Jack Corrigan, Mike Hogwood downstairs, and uh, right now, let's go downstairs to Mike, who visited a moment ago with the head coach Your for Duke. offense actually outgained State there in the first half. Now you got to put some points on the board. That's the whole thing, Mike. Our, our defense has stiffened up since early in the uh, third quarter. We had one bad break with that fumble play that we thought was, uh, well, let's just say we had a disagreement about that. but. Uh, we moved the ball well, but we've obviously got to get some points now. We even missed the darn two field goals that we should have had, but overall, we got to get touchdowns. That's the whole key. What have you seen in special teams that's able you to have those great runbacks? Well, we've had a good uh, kickoff return for a number of years, and Brad Breedley, the guy, but Leroy Goldman has had three real good ones, and these kids take a lot of pride in it. We're nationally ranked in that. Uh, we don't want to have to return very many kickoffs, but when we do, we want to be good at it. All right, that's Barry Wilson. Go get him, Coach. Head coach of the Duke Blue Devils, he thinks his team can come back, back upstairs. All right, Mike, thanks very much. History tells us, yes, they can when they're playing the folks from Raleigh. Been a wild, wild series. This is the 68th meeting. Duke leads the all-time mark, but they have their work cut out for them, and they'll have to play defense initially. NC State will get the football. Barber and Lawrence are deep, and we're underway in the second half. This will be Reggie Lawrence from a yard deep. And he's coming out. He'll get to the 19-yard line, so it'll be a 20-yard return, and State will put it in business there. Their quarterback is senior Terry Jordan, who had a solid first half throwing the football. They talk about his accuracy, 8 of 11 in the first half, and he threw quite frequently on first down, Jack Corgan. That's what I, I want to watch here early in the third quarter to see how Ted Payne, the coordinator, might adjust his game plan. They did a lot of first down throwing, as you mentioned. a little bit behind him. And Terry Jordan now eight out of 12 on the day, but keep in mind that he completed six of his first seven, so he has struggled a little bit of late that ball behind him. Receiver runs a slant pattern. Yes, he should catch the ball, but that is more difficult than you'd realize because all his momentum is going one way and the ball is tailing the opposite direction. Goins, uh, academic All-ACC selection last year. Here's Barber on the predetermined Anthony Barber still going to the 31-yard line. First down for the Wolfpack. They told us that they had three options. Only one was a read. What are they talking about there, Jack? Well, that time, as you said, by the predetermined, when he's going to read somebody, he's going to read the tackle, and he's going to play fake with the fullback. There, it's just the action like he's going to do it. His second read is the defensive end, and then he makes the pitch. That time, he had decided from the get-go for the pitch that gained 12. Here's option football again. Ball's on the ground. Duke football at the 30-yard line. They needed their defense to rise, and they get a huge play to begin the third quarter. Dwayne Mark, the senior from Missouri City, Texas, on the football. 
Barber, I think, takes his head off this ball. He did, looking up to see where the defense was. Didn't come up with a good grip on the ball, and Duke with a golden opportunity. But as Barry Wilson told Mike Hogwood, they've got to convert them into touchdowns. And it is still Spence Fisher, the sophomore quarterback. When he had time, he was pretty efficient in the first half. Cuthbert trying to find some room, and he'll get credit for about two yards. Merritt and Covington were there, along with Warren Pinckney. It was three quarters of the linebacking core that stopped that play. You see Fisher's numbers in the first half. Got the long pass to Bill Kayat, the deflected pass that set up the touchdown. For Duke. They have a red shirt at quarterback, transfer from Ohio State. It was a high school All-American, Joe Pickens. They think these two are going to battle the next couple of years. Man open, 15-yard line. Inside the 10 to the 6 goes Ray Farmer. He's a true freshman from Kernersville, North Carolina. Glenn High School, 12th catch on the year. You know how much more effective Spence Fisher is when he throws quickly down the middle? Nothing wrong with throwing down the middle of the field. You just can't wait a long time for the underneath coverage to get there. You see, because it was delivered sooner, Merritt and Covington couldn't provide the help underneath. They go on the ground. Five to the two. And maybe inside of there, David Merritt finally does stop Randy Cuthbert. And I'm a little surprised. I figured they would go play action there from the seven because they've struggled running the football, but they get a good push on the corner. And they got a good block on the flank as well by Brad Breedlove. You know, to run on the perimeter, your wide receivers have to be able to stalemate the cornerbacks. And he did a good job that time to take it down less than the length of the football from the goal line. Second and goal inside the one. Fullback, touchdown. Duke. Baldwin gets it across, and back come the Blue Devils. Well, they started the first half with a kickoff return and came away with no points. They get the second half going with a fumble recovery, and this time they do convert as Robert Baldwin piled it right up over the middle behind Jerome Egg and P.J. Shunk on the right side. Steve Aldifer, the left guard, Robert Gibby back in the ball game also. Had a pretty good block at the point of attack. Extra point by Gardner makes it 21 to 14, and that is just what Duke needed. A turnover, and they capitalized. Barry Wilson said, we need touchdowns. We don't need field goals. Well, they got one there. 21-14, state at home. ACC football is brought to you in part by your local Jeep and Eagle dealers. See your Jeep and Eagle dealer for the best in automotive sales, service, and value. A moment ago, Robert Baldwin came right after the NC State defense. Well, this really changes the complexion of the game now as Duke basically scoring in the first two minutes of the second half makes the game a, a, a one-touchdown ball game coming out of the locker room, really. And, and keeps the tradition alive of That's the right. craziness of this rivalry. Tom Cochran handles the kickoff chores, and uh, Reggie Lawrence on a couple of hops at the seven. The elusive one gets it out to the 27-yard line, and that's where NC State will begin. Ray Farmer down on special teams for the Blue Devils. He had the big reception to set up the touchdown, a backup tight end. Terry George jogs back on. He gets credit for that fumble on the option play, not Anthony Barber, that was recovered by Duke at the 30-yard line. That's a tough fumble to take because it was a pretty good pitch. Barber and Maynard in the I formation. They give to the up back and Maynard across the 30 to the 33 yard line. A quiet six yards, if you will, before Scott Berdan makes the tackle. They've done a good job on Berdan. The guards have fired out the center. Todd Ward has gotten a piece of Berdan. We haven't called his name very frequently today. What NC State needs to do here offensively is get back to their first down efficiency like they did on that play. In the second quarter, they struggled on their first down plays. Barber straight ahead will be very close to a first down. Berdan again making the tackle. James 
Knight says that's enough for down, so NC State will get a new set. Reggie Lawrence comes into the ball game. Also, Ray Griffiths, two new wideouts for uh, State. They lost Robert Hinton, the junior, earlier for the ball game with a separated shoulder after making a long pass catch and run. Here's option, here's Barber. Another successful first down, Sean Thomas. Knocked him out of bounds, but uh, give him seven yards. You remember my comment on the Cuthbert run. Watch the right side of your screen. Reggie Lawrence against Jamal Ellis. Get a good block on the per perimeter by your wide receiver. You're going to get some good yardage. I believe he uh, gets credit for one of those pancakes. That's right. Or decleater. We used to call them cockroaches. Cockroaches? Why is that? Because you're laying on your back with the arms and legs flapping in the air like a cockroach. That'll work also. 11.37 to go here in the third. Rainer, big opening. First down, 49-yard line of Duke. Derek Jackson makes the tackle, but the strong safety does it after a solid advance by Maynard, the senior from Rignon, Georgia. You just have to believe that Dick Sheridan and his offensive coaches got in the faces of that offensive unit when they were on the sidelines when Duke got back into the ball game and they said, gentlemen, we're going to run the ball and we're going to run the ball right down the field. So far it has worked. on the afternoon for Anthony Barber. He hasn't really gotten loose on a run yet, but he has a 20-yard touchdown from Terry Jordan. Warren Scoville is down. He was trying to put pressure on Terry Jordan. Looked like a knee or an ankle for the Duke defensive tackle. Barber, with that spinning and the balance, he bounced right off of the tackle try of Jamal Ellis. Yeah, that's one of the things that is so impressive about Barber. We saw him have a big day last week against Virginia and obviously having a terrific year as they work on Scoville. He makes not only people miss, but he bounces off so many would-be tacklers. He's very strong. Well, he has got that low center of gravity at 5'9". They list him at 175. He might go even a little more than that, and that's a well-put-together 175, 180 pounds. You can see 93 yards and total offense on the afternoon for Anthony is he uh, went over a thousand yards earlier in the ball game for the season he had only 10 receptions coming in so he's at half of that uh, percent board today here he gets the football straight ahead David Wafel makes the tackle and that might be yet another first down. Now that first down proficiency, you know, we always talk about the third down conversions and certainly uh, that tells you how long a team goes and now it's Scott Perdan who's having the problems. Might be cramps or something. Yeah, that's what it looks like for Perdan. They'll stretch the chains and find they're just a little bit shy. Third down conversions tell you that drives are being sustained but first down yardage tells you how well your offense is moving and here on this drive it has been excellent work on first down for NC State. Let's hope it's a cramp because Verdan is not putting any weight on that right leg. 40% on the year in third down conversions for State. And uh, right at that this afternoon. It might be third down and an inch. Jordan will take it himself. And he probably got about two inches on that. He did not get very much more than that. Keith DuBose came running up trying to help out the linesman on the spot of the football. But where they have Terry's forward progress marked, it is a first down. Although, will Jim Knight? Now he won't even bother bringing the chain. Yes, he will. I think Barry Wilson said, I want to see for sure that he got it. Here we go, Wilson! <laughs> Last year, NC State won nine football games. They lost the Peach Bowl to uh, East Carolina. Pirates having one of their best seasons ever a year ago. This year, they have an opportunity, if they're in win next week, an opportunity 
then going to a bowl game, which is almost a certainty of winning 10 football games, and no state football team has ever done that. It is a first down. Jordan swings it to his tight end, Hour. And Neil Hour catches the football, and then he's greeted by Brad Sherrod and folks. Just a two-yard pickup. Well, they lined up Hour as a wide receiver that time in the slot of the twin set to give the Duke defense a different look. This runs a quick little curl out route, Brad Sherrod right on top of it. It was good pressure inside as Jordan had to throw the ball sooner. Travis Pearson was the guy putting the pressure on. Duke shows blitz here on second and long. Now they back out of it. Steps, or he might have tried to turn it upfield before he had the football. Well, we see NC State many times when the opposition gets down inside their 40, really jump around with a lot of different looks to try and make that quarterback change his play call at the line of scrimmage and maybe go to something he is not as comfortable with. And that's what he did there. And State now is a third and long. This is the tenth play of the drive. The fullback gets it to the 34-yard line. James Kirkland, who's been very busy at a defensive end, the sophomore from Atlanta, brings him down. Now Barry Wilson looks on, and he wants to see if they're going to bring their kick unit on for the long field goal or if they're going to try to punt and move deep. And it is Kilpatrick, the punter, on. So he'll try to cough and corner one. Well, in a one-touchdown ball game, you play field position, and Dick Sheridan wants to back up Duke. Duke yelling uh, to check fake also. Kilpatrick kicks it very high. Outstanding punt. This one will be down at the 10-yard line. Just a 25-yard punt, but that's what they were looking for. Sean McGuire was down on specials to down at 8.28, left third quarter, 21 to 14. NC State leading. We take a timeout for a local break. 21-14, Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh for pleasant places to take in a football game. And they've begun a drive not only to add on to Carter Finley Stadium, make it seat 65,000 off behind uh, that facility there by the tents. They also plan on building a new 22,000 seat basketball arena. Be a marvelous complex. It's in a wooded area. It's really a beautiful place. And right now, the sea of red here at Carter Finley, a bit concerned. Their team leads by seven, but the Duke has some momentum. They have the football at their own ten. Fisher got it complete. And still going is Baldwin to the 21-yard line, and that should be a first down. Big play by Baldwin's second effort. We go downstairs to Mike Hogwood. Mike? Drew, good news for the Duke defense. Scott Verdan, who uh, had to be helped off the field, is on the sidelines. He's getting a new tape job on his ankle, his right ankle, and they think he'll be back. Thanks, Mike. You look at uh, the pain, the grimace on the face. Easy for us to put these guys back in the ball game, isn't it, Jack? Cuthbert. There's Ricky Logo again. We hadn't talked about him in a while, and it was time uh, for him to assert himself again. Well, Ricky, in doing all that, might have hurt himself as well as assert himself. But the big senior co-captain back up onto his feet elsewhere in college football. Wake Forest with that 10 to nothing lead. They're perhaps in line for a bowl game if they can come up with at least one more victory or two. Penn State with the early lead and App State with the lead over NCAA and T. Second down, call at 11. Fisher trouble, sack at the fifth line. Third sack of the ball game, John Aikens gets it. 34th sack of the year, 11 more than all of last year. 
Well, Logos had a great year. Reeves has had a great year. John Aikens has been battling shoulder problems much of the season. Just a good power rush that time by the junior. You know, a lot of times when we talk about defensive fronts, it's very often meant to occupy people so the linebackers make all the tackles. Not only do these uh, front three occupy people, they make a lot of plays. Third down at 16 for Fisher and the Blue Devils. That's intercepted. 36 Covington with the football. Touchdown, NC State. How about that defense? Second week with two defensive scores. Under pressure from John Aikens. Smith Fisher threw it off balance. Nettle. And 27 yards later, it's an NC State touchdown. Look how he throws his off his back foot. Off target of Dan. Clark Covington is right there. Cruises in untouched. What a remarkable defense. What a remarkable defense. What a remarkable stat you just uh, talked about. Four touchdowns, really three from the defense, one from the special teams. You can credit it either way with the block punt as Vita Tech makes it 28 to 14. Four touchdowns in two weeks, three straight weeks that the defense has scored. What is that, 12 times in the last three years? I mean, the defense right now is beating both teams by themselves. They're scoring enough points. And you can see in that end zone replay as John Aikens bears down on Spence Fisher. Watch how Fisher is not set when he throws this ball. Kind of backing away. See how his feet work? Actually parallel to each other. He did not turn the hips and stride forward to throw the ball. He threw that flat-footed. That will make the ball sail. It sailed by Dean Clark right into the midsection of Damian Covington, who returned it for the score. First touchdown for Damian Covington, the former New Jersey State heavyweight wrestling champion. And not only does Covington have six points, he has 13 tackles, but he's still got some work left to do. He's averaging 16 and a half, as we've talked about over the last few ball games. 6.32 left in the third quarter. Plenty of time for the Duke Blue Devils, and this has been an exciting play, not only today, but all season long. And you see them standing in the middle. Jack, I guess they're doing that so NC can't figure out which way Breedlove will go. That's the man they like to see handle the football, and Six Eye is glancing down there right now. He's gonna hit the, uh, the chip shot, the sandwich kickoff again, I gotta believe, try and send it high and short at about the 25. You called it, that's exactly what we have, right at the 24-yard uh, line. And out to the 33 goes Gavin Gray, second time he's fielded a kick this afternoon. It's interesting, you're almost saying, we'll give you to the 30 or 35 because we don't want you to run it past midfield. They've done it twice already today. Next Saturday, check your local listings. Jack and I, Mike, will all be in Durham as Duke hosts North Carolina. Those two teams, two schools always get after one another. And South Carolina travels to Death Valley to take on the Tigers of Clemson. Again, check your local listings. New quarterback, Steve Prince, the senior. And he hands off to Randy Grandy, who'll get about two yards up the middle. And that is all. Prince is a 6'3", 195-pound senior from Roscoe, Illinois. And he has played quite a bit this year, as you can tell. He's been alternating with Spence Fisher. We'll try to light a spark under that Duke attack right now. I didn't think Fisher played all that badly. He made some poor decisions when he was under pressure, Jack. Well, that's the toughest thing for an inexperienced quarterback is the decisions when you're getting heat. They go on a hitch pass, and that pass is low to Stanley Dorsey, and he couldn't field it. Fisher's numbers, 15 of 24, 174 yards and a touchdown. He also threw two interceptions. Well, he had the fumble that was returned for a score and the interception returned for a score, and his other interceptions set up a state score, so three of the four NC stands came by way of errors from that young man shaking his head. He has a lot of talent, a lot of football yet to be played for Spence Fisher. It was not his day here in Raleigh. Greenlove running a little 
post corner, and it goes over his head, Ricky Turner, and over the top coverage, the free safety, and the crowd, again, comes to their feet and applauds that state defense. Now you've got some very rabid fans here in Raleigh for this Wolfpack team, and they've really taken to heart the efforts of the defensive unit this season. Liddell George back deep to receive the punt of Tim Davis. George, very dangerous, 73 yards this year. He went for a touchdown on one punt return. From his 22 to his 27. I thought there was a little extra at the end of the play, but no flags. 28-14 with 5.29 left in the third quarter. State in control. <laughs> Drew Goodman, Jack Corrigan, Mike Hogwood. NC State leading 28-14 on our ACC of the week with 5.29 left in the third. The man in the middle next to a 33. There he is, 17. Terry George. Dale Strom, the defensive coordinator for Duke, says, I like him a lot. He's a linebacker dressed up as a quarterback. What do you think he means by that, Jack? He just means he is one gutsy, I'll do whatever it takes to win kind of player. He'll take a blow. He'll give a blow if he has to. The sophomore from Lakeland, Florida. 41st reception of the year. Get 21 on that one. Ran a safety blitz from the far side. And Jordan had the right play call to go to the opposite side. And Eddie Goins coming back from that shoulder problem makes the grab. It's a quiet leader. He might not be garrulous off the field, but he has everybody's respect in the huddle. How about this for a run? Greg Maynard. He goes 240, and he was like an elevator that was still going with a full load. Well, if it was, his elevator was going to the basement because everybody was going down. I mean, this was just great power running. When the white shirts of defensive players wind up on their backs, you know that Maynard can pack a punch. 42-yard line of Duke. NC State going for the kill shot. Barber. Travis Pearson led the charge, the senior from Plano, Texas, number 80. Brad Sherrod was there as well with good contact to stand him up so Pearson could finish him off. Duke's in a situation again where they've got to have something happen out of their defense. They produced the fumble early in this quarter to cut the lead to 21 to 14, but the mistake by Spence Fisher that Damian Covington returned for a touchdown has made it a 14-point bulge and State trying to go for the jugular here with a, what could be clinching score. They're going to measure. That's uh, exactly what is transpiring right now. You saw Barry Wilson a moment ago. His team uh, hasn't won a game in more than a year in the ACC. He was around, however, not as the head coach, as an assistant to Steve Spurrier. When Duke had those two terrific years in 88 and 89, 7, 3, and 1 in 88, and then 8, 4, 1989, they went to the All-American Bowl, off to Texas Tech in that one. Very close with Steve, the Florida coach. In fact, Steve Spurrier Jr. is a backup wide act. Here's the old T formation. They break that. But somebody in red covered it up at the 35-yard line. Chris Henny Road. Chris Henny Road, a red-shirt freshman from Florida, playing at left guard for Sean Johnson. Maynard coughing up the football for the second time as Keith DeBose stripped it away. But Chris Henny Road, fortunately for the Wolfpack, was there to cover it. Terry Jordan changed his cadence because he wanted to change the play. Neil Auer didn't realize that. 
was already uh, reading down on a linebacker. Well, no, see, all Neil was doing there, Drew, was here, Terry. So he said, maybe if I go to the other side of the line, I'll be able to hear what he's saying. Is that what was happening? Yeah, I didn't realize that. All star foul, offense. Neil said, I can't hear you. So he just said, let me see if I can hear it better on the other side. Boy, that's nothing more frustrating or embarrassing for a football player than, than when you make that kind of mistake where everybody in the stadium knows you did wrong. And, and it's kind of a strange feeling because all of a sudden you're the only one moving and everybody else is kind of standing still looking at you. Blitz coming from the corner. Jordan under pressure and he's hit. But his arm was moving forward. So it'll be an incompletion. Derek Jackson, the strong safety, was blitzing on the play. Good call by Dale Strom to send the ship. He had both safeties coming, Jackson and Edwards. That's a risk you take to send both safeties, but it paid off the interception. Jordan banged up a little bit trying to make sure he's all right as State goes now to their pass look with the tailback now being Aubrey Shaw. They need the 25-yard line. Shaw has the football, third catch. He stopped at the 33-yard line, so he'll be well short of where they needed to be. Daryl Spells, outside linebacker, chemistry major, senior from Richwood, Texas, number 45, made the tackle. Well, it's it's be, it's it's tweener, tweener time. Yeah, That's right. tweener time. So they'll go for it on fourth down. No, I'm sorry. You know, I'm a down ahead of everybody. Third down. Forgive me, folks. Third down and eight. Jordan, great catch by Auer. First and ten at the 11. Second time they have gone straight down the middle of the field, splitting the two deep coverage. This time, rather than Anthony Barber, the tailback, it's the tight end, Neil Auer. And this is one way to make up for a penalty, make a fine catch on the 22-yard game. T. Edwards made him pay for it. Well, you know as a receiver, when you extend with your arms above your head, you're going to get caught. Big catch. This uh, was ugly from the get-go. Jordan turned left, uh, and of course his running back, Mayner, ran right. Well, it was going to be a play fake. The problem was Greg Maynor was supposed to be on the left side of Terry Jordan for the play fake, and he was on the right side of Jordan. And I don't know, John, do we give him credit for the tackle, Maynor, on that one? John Mappier, statistician, says no. Inside, 150 to go in the third quarter. NC State leading 28 to 14 over Duke. Barber got the quarter. by Reggie Lawrence. Give a lot of credit when the option goes to the wide receivers on the perimeter and Lawrence with the block that enabled Barber to turn the corner. There is an injured Duke player down. I think it's David Wafel who is down for the second time. This after. Watch the bottom of your screen right there. Reggie Lawrence taking care of Keith DeBose. And then Barber ran right through the attempted tackle of Sean Thomas. Wafel's up and apparently okay. Second time he's uh, in assistance off the field this afternoon, but he keeps coming back 34 to 14. Barber's seventh rushing touchdown of the year. A 14-yard run. That is Steve Vitatech, electrical engineering major, sophomore from Winston-Salem. He'll try to remain perfect on the afternoon. That's uh, Reggie Lawrence's second handshake, or, or excuse me, what? Uh, cockroach, dead road. I forgot which road it was. Cockroach. The afternoon. Whistles uh, will blow this one dead, so they'll probably have to line up and do it again. Say this much, Jack. The uh, stage is now fully set with uh, the opportunity for Duke to make Dead this ball real. Foul, false start, offense. There is no repeat today. 
Well, so the stage is set for Duke to uh, make this thing very interesting if the tradition is to hold true. They're down by 21 points about now that uh, things should start falling their way, right? With all the weird things to happen, but NC State trying to make sure that Barry Wilson's club does not maintain that tradition, rather that State keeps its drive alive towards football on New Year's Day. Extra yard. Do not bother him. And it's 35 to 14 with 140 left in the third quarter. Let's take another look at that the touchdown run by Anthony Barber. See if we can watch that block, Jack, that you pointed out by Reggie Lawrence. On the right side of your screen, right there is where Lawrence took down to Barber, ran right through Sean Thomas. If you get down in that part of the field, you hate to tell a safety because he's the last line of defense, if you will, to not be conservative. But Thomas's hesitation enabled Barber to see the space to the corner and a little juke, and then he's just going to outrun him. Sometimes you get down deep inside your own territory. A guy turns the corner, you're a safety man. You run full tilt and hope you can get a piece of it. As soon as you wait, you've created the scene. Barber with a touchdown rushing today and also a touchdown receiving. He has five catches, 46 yards. Anthony Barber, both quick and fast. Jack, you like to point out that not every player that's quick is necessarily fast, and there are also players that are great sprinters that might not be quick. You've got to have that ability to shift gears and change direction. Another short type of kick. In the open field again, Goldman still going, stumbles, and loses the football, and Duke or MC State, I think MC State got on the football. It's a touchback. Oh, man, what a play. Can you believe that? We told you it might get weird. Sebastian Savage was the guy who stripped the football away. Goldman staggered at about the 25-yard line. And that enabled the pursuit. You see, Savage is the safety. He gets caught up. And now it's the foot race. Diving try again by Girard. He's still in bounds, but he's lost his balance. And now Savage pops the ball free. The race is on into the end zone. At first, it appeared that number four for Duke, Carlos Bagley, had come up with the ball. But instead, it bounced free. And number nine, Mark Latta, is the guy who recovered it for the touchback. Wow. 82-yard return for naught. I mean, if you're a Duke fan, you just have to be sick right now. Two-yard gain by Maynard. That's amazing. I am still baffled by that play. Look Turnover at conversions today. Well, that's in and the last two weeks. Four defensive touchdowns. They have scored three times off of the turnovers today, and they basically took away a score with that turnover. That is one of the stranger plays you will see. Jackson coming on the blitz, doesn't get there, he does. <laughs> it looked like George was going to step out of that, and then he falls at the 19, so it'll go as a four-yard sack. Good coverage as well by Pete DeBose on the freshman wide receiver, Mike Guffey. As Jordan was trying to get away from Jackson, he really didn't have an outlet there with Guffey, the only guy in his field of vision. There's Derek Jackson, a history major from Long Valley, New Jersey. Aubrey Shaw has come in. And Liddell George also in the backfield here on third down and 12. They need the 30-yard line. out of bounds at the 26, so it'll be fourth down, and we'll see the NC State punt team. Let's go visit with our Mike Hogwood. Mike? Well, Drew, uh, after
after that great and weird play, you might think there would be here on the state sideline. There weren't. There were some very upset coaches, some very upset players. You heard Dick Sheridan say kick coverage is something they worked on all week long. Well, they're uh, going to try something different, I think, if they get a chance to cover another kick because that certainly didn't work. No, obviously it didn't. It, uh, they haven't found an answer for Galvin. He's been running free on every kickoff. Well, they moved him up into that short spot when the state started kicking him short. He said, I can do it as well from there as I can from deep. DuBose is back deep. They come after the punt. They don't get there. DuBose from his own 40. He can Oh, man, what a hit. And DuBose is in the open field. He's rolling the 37-yard line. Folks, I don't know if we can catch it again, but Gavin Gray nearly knocked out number I think it William was 21. Strong. Yeah, the William, William strong. strong. William needed to be strong because he uh, got punished. I mean, he flew five yards in the air. We're through three quarters. Stay with us, folks. You never know. Football is a game of contact. Watch the right side of your screen as Gavin Gray makes contact with number 21, William Strong. Wow. That is as hard of a hit as you will ever see delivered on a football field. And both guys got up after the play and went to their respective corners after the uh, mandatory eight count, and we were ready to go again. What's that line? Dancing's a contact sport. That was a violent collision. That was felonious assault. There was also a personal foul call on NC State, so the ball's all the way down to the Wolfpack 21. Steve Prince, the senior, again back in at quarterback, second series, blitz coming, Prince walks out, and can he find somebody? No. He was trying to get it to Ray Wright, but pretty darn good coverage downfield. David Merritt was uh, applying the pressure, came on a blitz. Well, that was almost like a multiple choice test if you want to talk about who was applying the pressure because you had three or four answers that would have been correct. That's right. There's Barrett. Three years starter. Cockburn. He'll lose a yard. Carl Reeves. Tried to run a quick little inside trap. And Clarence Collins, the trapper, went right by the potential trapee, David Merritt. Well, they're at that magic line, the beginning of the red zone, and all Duke has got backwards a yard. It's third down and 11. Again, the blitz coming. Prince has time. It's intercepted. Ricky Turner has it, and the flag comes down. Now another flag comes down. There's four of them on the ground. If these were oranges, you'd think you were in Big 8 country. i got to tell you, I think this one may go against the Wolfpack. The only way it will go in favor of NC State would be if Duke is called for a pick play. But where that flag is down near the goal line tells me that Jim Knight's going to make the foul call against the Wolfpack, but we'll wait for the official call. I know there was a post-possession foul, probably a cliff or illegal block in the back on NC State on the interception return, but there was a flag higher to the interception in the secondary. Well, the NC State defense of unit is staying out there, so is the Duke We have offensive. two live ball fouls, both against the defense. The first is holding prior to the change of possession. The second is a block below the waist after the change of possession. The first foul will be accepted. It'll be a first down for the offense. They run a crossing route. Watch the upper left-hand side of your screen. And right there, you could see Sebastian Savage had a hold of Brad Breedlove as he tried to turn back outside. And the back judge saw it, threw the flag, and it negated the Ricky Turner interception, which would have been his second of the afternoon. Instead, it's a first and 10 inside the state 12-yard line. Love was well covered. He ran a little 
slant. Wayne Washington had the man coverage. Steve Prince still looking for his first completion of the afternoon since going in. He is 0 for 4. Two receivers go to the top on the second down and 10. Duke obviously needing a touchdown down by three scores. Hunford bounces. He gets to about the seven. Sebastian Savage was the first to arrive. Get it, Natalie! Johnny Evans, the former NC State quarterback and punter who was a part of the Wolfpack work. Right there at the end of the play. That's Johnny in the upper left-hand corner. He had a little smile on his face. And I see that contact. That's no big problem. But he was backing up. He was giving ground, I tell you. That's right. Might not have felt there was any problem, but he was in a back pedal. is like the umpire from Star Wars, and there's Darth Vader right there, number three, Mike Reed. I tell you what, if I was thinking of secondary together, this guy would be one of my first choices. A 210-pound safety who can play man coverage as good as any cornerback in the country. I don't know if he would have scored even if Prince didn't get there. He was running, the tank was running near empty at that point. Great play, however, by that man. This game's summary brought to you by Schlitzball Flicker Genuine Draft. Five Duke turnovers. A couple of defensive touchdowns for NC State. Anthony Barber having a big day, not only running the football, but also swinging out of the backfield. And same old story for the NC State defense. Jordan has it knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Mike Reed, the strong safety, who made that long interception return a few moments ago as a junior. He was second team all ACC last year. Coach, defensive coordinator Buddy Green is absolutely effusive in his praise of Reed. Basically saying if there's a better strong safety around, he wants to see him. Well, he gets my vote. Like I said, he's got the ability to cover man-to-man -man like a quarterback, and he's big enough to make the open field hits. Barber threw a small opening and dropped at the 28-yard line as he was about to shift gears. Keith DeBose, good short tackle. Inside 13 and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter at Carter Finley Stadium on a beautiful autumn afternoon in Raleigh, North Carolina. Along with Mike Hogwood and Jack Corrigan, I'm Drew Goodman, and we're glad you're along on Jefferson Pilot this afternoon for our ACC Game of the Week. Afternoon for the senior from Camden, New Jersey, but we talked about his blocking today quite a bit. That keeps the drive alive. Thought perhaps we might see Jeff Bender get some time here, but Terry Jordan winding up his state career with one more game yet to play here at Carter Finley next week against the resurgent Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. We're trying to update you on their ball game against Georgia Tech here in the fourth quarter. They have a shot at going to the Independence Bowl if they keep winning. Oh, big hit and a sack. 45, Daryl Spells. That was just come on and keep on coming. And Warren Scoville, who has been down a couple of times today, is down again. See Spells coming, he stepped right around George Hegeman. Ted Kane, the offensive coordinator for NC State, as you look at Scoville, who Jack said has been on the ground a couple of times today, talking about praise. He loves George Hegeman, his right tackle. 6'7", 
and 332 pounds. He's a redshirt freshman, and he says, well, been, you know, they never get any credit freshman of the year in, in conference place, but he thinks he should be considered for that honor in the ACC this year. Hegeman has been a starter throughout and really moves his feet well for a big man. It does a pretty good job of pass protecting. That's what was unusual about that time as Spells was able to put the move around him just to the right edge of your screen as you see where Scoville got his leg caught underneath him and he had a problem with that right knee earlier in the game and needing a little assistance. So he'll go off and Mike Stallmeyer will back into the ball game. At least we anticipate that happening. Here's the backup. We were mentioning the Demon Deacons at the half, leading down in Atlanta over the Ramblin' Wreck, 10 to three. What a story that'd be for uh, Coach Dooley to go out and end up going to a bowl game. What are they going, six in a row now, Jack? Well, they're trying to make it six in a row and go to seven and three on the year. They play this Wolfpack team here at Carter Field the next Saturday. Made a good tackle there. Now the important thing for NC State right here is that they're keeping the ball in bounds and trying to wind that clock down. 11.40 to play. Ames Dick Sheridan tries to guide his team to their eighth win of the season. Trips go to the top. Aubrey Shaw back in the lineup, and now Shaw departs the backfield. Gary Downs couldn't hang on to the football. 13 is the kicker coming into the ball game. As Jordan goes out, we'll see Steve Vitatek. And he'll attempt one from 37 yards. They'd want the points, but they'd almost be better missing it to avoid another kickoff. <laughs> You're right. You might lose four points in that transition. Seven in intermission. Duke got a quick score coming out of the blocks after a turnover, but since then, NC State has had plenty of answers. 